All right, so at this point we should have our site resurrected. And this is the Victor's Bakery. Last time we had a long discussion about uh, updates and so forth. But we should have your site up and running and we should be in the dashboard. Let me go back to the dashboard and look at this. It's been one week, but it looks like there are two updates for us. We're not going to do the updates right now, but just be aware. Up on the top, I see that I've got two updates, that little spinning arrow at the top. If you click on it, it tells you there's two updates. Duplicator has a new update, and the Canyon theme has an update. So if you notice with Canyon, it doesn't really explain what's new, but it goes from version 005 to 006. Um, for some reason, there's no check details. That would be nice, but I don't see that. With Duplicator, though, there is. It goes from version 5.30 to version 5.32. And usually, when there's an increment in the, in the furthest, most right number, that's usually minor updates. The, the larger the whole number, the larger usually it means that there's big updates. But if you really want to find out what has changed, you can click on View Details, and it's going to be kind of wordy. Uh, well, actually, these guys, are, you have to click further on their on their link. You don't have to do that, but um, improved checks for shell exec support, updated refactor, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it is a little nerdy, but in short, remember we talked how updates are useful. Just by looking at these, what I would do is, of course, I would do the order that I talked about last time. I would update my theme. You don't have to do it, but I would update my theme, and then I would update my duplicator plugin. We're not going to, but you can if you want to. What we're going to talk about today, if we look at our syllabus, because we're trying to follow the syllabus as much as possible. So on number on week one, we did all of that. And here's week two, downloading and set up the e-commerce plugin. So right today, we're going to start to talk about this e-commerce plugin. And it's going to go from this week to next week, and then you know, just on the last week. So we are following along pretty well. And depending how we go, we'll be able to add more to the course. But here's the big idea then. We've got our site. We're going to add e-commerce features. And that's going to be a plugin because plugins are extra, like mini apps, that can, <coughs> add, that can add new features to the site. So hover over plugins and click on add <coughs> new. <coughs> plugins and then add new. And later on in the course, I'll I have a discussion on about five or six plugins that I really like that I recommend that you have for just about all of your sites. These are plugins that I, uh, in my company, we do for clients. But the one we want right now, at the top right, we've got search plugins. We're going to search the plugin directory, and we will search for the plugin called WPE Commerce. WP space E Commerce. Press enter. There's no search button, which is weird. You have to press enter. And then you'll get, in my case, I have 764 items. So let's say you didn't have a class or an instructor telling you exactly what to download. Let's say you wanted to download a brand new Twitter plugin, let's say. A plugin that will show Twitter tweets on your home page. Well, maybe I would search for Twitter and I would get 5,000 results. How would you know what the good ones are? The, good, the cool thing about the modern WordPress 4 is that this plugin directory is much better. In older versions, it was kind of a wild west. And now, here, we've got search results, featured, popular, recommended, and favorites. So more ways to search and to find what you're looking for. What's also been refined is the system of, uh, of rating. Because let's say in the real world you're trying to go to a brand new Mexican food restaurant. How many of you are going to drive around the city and walk into the first Mexican food restaurant you see? As opposed to how many of you will pull out your phone, search Yelp, and say, let's not go in there. I, they found a cockroach in the taco. <laughs> Well, probably many of you are going to look it up, are going to get some reviews and ratings for the restaurants and make some decision based on that. Same thing for plugins. So if we're looking for a Twitter plugin, how do we know the best one? Well, we look at the ratings. 
it's got star ratings out of five and then how many active installs and so forth so just by taking a quick look here we're we're gonna use the one called WP e-commerce and it's from the developer WP e-commerce but let's say we didn't know that and we were looking at this screen and we saw this had three uh, and a half stars but this one's got four stars and this one over here might have oh like that one that one's got five stars so why are we getting the one with only three and a half stars when there's a five star one this only has one rating so it's obviously the, the plugin developer's mother that gave him a five star rating <laughs> so that uh, Sunny would feel nice but that's only got one star rating perfect five and it's got only a hundred or so active installations so this is how you make your decision on the best plugin you're going to find plenty of articles out there that tell you the best Twitter plugin, the best e-commerce plugin. They're, everyone's got an opinion. But you can make the decision also by checking these things. How many stars does it have out of how many in total? 210. How many active installations? That's a globally. 60,000 people or more are using this plugin. Right here, better stars, less ratings, and less installations. The third thing to look at is also right here. Last updated, one month ago, two months ago, one year ago. I wouldn't work with plugins that are that old. In internet time, one year is a long time, especially when it comes to security features. Uh, hackers can develop an exploit for a uh, WordPress plugin, and suddenly all the 1,000 users that are using this plugin are vulnerable. So this developer hasn't updated it in a year. There might be a bunch of viruses and, and, and exploits targeting this plugin that has not been patched. That's why we get these updates. That's why this little number increases all the time up here, because the developers create new versions that usually fix security issues and sometimes give us new features. And then uh, this is less of an issue, but another thing to also look at is, is it compatible with your version of WordPress? It's almost a given that they are. But take a look at that. Anyway, this little gray bar will, will be your best way to figure out what's the best plugin for your solution. And so the one we're going to use in this class is WP eCommerce. If you'd like to, you can also click on more details. Under more details, you'll get a write-up about the Plugin. This is since 2006, helping entrepreneurs, etc. Other details. Uh, here is the breakdown. Kind of a, kind of an odd breakdown of actual star ratings. So 112 perfect five stars, and then kind of relatively a lot one stars. So you might say, well, really, why are we going to go for this one if there's other ones that have higher stars? This is the thing that we'll see about plugins, as we might see also, let's say, on Yelp. Um, it's much more common for a person to go to a restaurant or any kind of business and when they have a bad experience to right away complain about it on Yelp for example well, I didn't get good service at that restaurant I'm gonna get on Yelp right now and put a bad review but it's less common unfortunately for people to do the opposite which is they got a good review and get on Yelp right away and give them five stars Usually, as a business owner, you have to beg for those five stars or remind your users, please give us five stars if you had a good time. But those ones that had a bad time will definitely not forget to give you a bad review. That's what's going on most of the time also with these big name plugins. Every single plugin will not solve every single person's problem. This particular plugin might be perfect for, let's say, even half, 30,000 people. 30,000 people might love this plugin, but very few of them are going to go in to give five stars. Let's say 1,000 people had a terrible experience. Let's say 100 people had a terrible experience with this plugin. They're probably going to go right away and give that one star. So there is the importance of the star ratings, of course, but since most of these plugins are free, based on the number of installations and features and such, you might just go ahead and try the plugin. See if it fits with your needs. And if it does, great. Use it. Maybe give them a five star, four star, whatever. 
If it doesn't work, well, it's up to you, of course, to give a negative review or just move on with your life and find a better plugin. But we're going to use this one. I'm going to show you also another big famous plugin WooCommerce. <clears throat> Question. Many times these plugins work under a freemium model, which uh, is a mixture of free stuff and premium stuff. So they're going to give you most of the features for free, and for most people that's all you need. But then there's a few extra features that you need, that you particularly need, that you might have to pay for. So we'll see that this plugin, WP Commerce, does have some extra features to pay for. We'll see how much it costs. But for most people, the free one will work pretty well. And that's how many plugins and themes also work. You'll get a free, you get the free version, and it'll do most of what you need, and then the extra one, the extra features will cost a little bit more. Here's the other big commerce plugin, WooCommerce. So this one has uh, four and a half stars with 1,100 reviews, more than a million active installs, updated three weeks ago. Well, this one then, just by looking at those stats, seems much better than the one we're going to talk about. Seems much better than the one we're going to talk about. I'm going to introduce both of them to you. We're going to use one particular one. But you then can decide which of the two works better for you because the concepts we'll learn here will be cross-platform. They will work on both platforms with little variations. But the reason that I don't talk about this one right away is this one often needs a lot of extras to really work well. Out of the box, I feel, for beginners especially, it's, it's kind of limited. It won't let you do everything that you want when you then realize you need to do this extra thing and this extra thing, suddenly you, you put in 20 bucks for this, and 20 for that, and 40 for this, and 80 for that, and suddenly you've spent a lot of money getting it to work exactly how you want it, even though you thought this was the best plugin because of these reviews. So both of these are very viable, and there's plenty of others also. But we're going to talk about WP e-commerce because I feel, for beginners, and in a class to teach this the most direct way, this is the best one to use because it works pretty much right out of the box. Some fancy things like cross-selling and upselling are handled better on, w, on, on WooCommerce, but definitely those are the extra paid things. And I'll explain a little more in detail cross-selling and upselling, but it depends on what you're selling if you need that. And I've worked with both of these plugins for clients. Both work really well. And the example that I showed, for example, one of the big clients, that Mexican food restaurant, the Kies Texcoco, they use this plugin. And so they sell, um, just to remind you, they sell all of these Mexican food plates. Aquí es Texcoco. Yes. This, uh, this uh, restaurant here that's been on Travel Channel, Cooking Channel, Rachel Ray has a write-up, LA Times, all of this stuff. They've got order online, and their whole order online system works on WP Commerce, which is exactly what we're going to talk about in this class. And so it's very straightforward. It can be pretty powerful like this. We can get tortilla soup, 10 ounces, a whole class set of them. Add to cart. Check out. We're ready to pay. All of that out of the box works really well. Um, that's why we're going to look at it. That's why that's the why we're going to use this one. If you wanted extra things like cross selling, like oh you bought this tortilla soup, won't you also like a an order of uh, horchata to 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 wash it down with? Well, that's cross selling. It's also trying to sell you extra things or upselling, which is you like the 10 ounce one, you might actually like the 20 ounce one with a side of lamb. That's upselling, having you buy more. Cross-selling is sell selling something you know, horizontally in addition to. That, those features are not as robust on WP Commerce, but not everyone needs that. So we'll see. But you can also do it with... Yeah, it has, it has some of those options, definitely. 
the more powerful ones, though, honestly, are in the, are in WooCommerce, but not free. Yes. So the upselling is kind of give you a few more examples. Because when I was buying a ticket on Delta yesterday, it kept saying, "Don't you want to upgrade to the Comfy Seat for fifty nine dollars?" And I said, "No." And they went, "Oh, don't, are you sure you don't want to upgrade to the Comfy Seat for fifty nine dollars?" Took three times I had to say no before I could buy the ticket. That's upselling. Yes, it wants you to. It wants you to upgrade, and they're trying to sell you something a little higher. And obviously, it can be annoying or it can be elegant, and that's always the difficulty in any of this commerce stuff. But now that you will be your own entrepreneur, you can decide how annoying it it will be for your customers. So, so this one is all WP Commerce. Um, so here, how do you think we add this feature then to our site? Click install now. It's going to connect to the official WordPress server. You see up here, it's going to WordPress.org. And it's downloading WP eCommerce version 3.10.1, unpacking it. It gives it to us as a zip file, but internally it's unpacking it, installing it. And then, very important, we have to activate the plugin. Click activate. You can have as many plugins as you want, uh, and you don't need to have them all active. But obviously, you don't want to have extra plugins that you're not even using because all those plugins and themes are going to be begging to be updated. So if you're never using that plugin that you downloaded a month ago, but it's been saying we need updates, it's still using up your resources. You might get some pop-ups when you get a new plugin. This one says you've got new features. Nice. Go ahead and click dismiss. And here's what we've got. I've got a handout for you. Question. Is there any time where plugins, if you add a couple, would um, not complement one another? Yes, unfortunately, there can be conflicts in plugins, definitely. Um, that's why it really behooves you to have also a development environment. You might have your live victorsbakery.com. But then I have a copy of it on WAMP where I can play with plugins and make changes and oops, I made a problem here. Let me fix it here and then I'll do it live on the real server once I worked out the kinks. So I've got a handout for you. What we're going to do actually is, yes, I'll check yours in one moment. Um, I've got a handout for you. Let me give you the handout. We'll take our first break because you might want to print that handout. And when we come back, we'll start to use the plugin. Now that we have, in short, we have an e-commerce site now with the click of a button. Obviously, we need to know how to use it, and that's what's coming up. So let's go to the network folder, network location, and let's go to our e-commerce folder. And you're going to see e-commerce number five, e-commerce plugin. Drag that to your desktop. Open up that PDF on your desktop. I'll turn the printer on in a moment. And uh, we did this very first part right here. Go to plugins, add new, search, blah, 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 install, activate, and we're on six. Let's take a break at this point. You can be on if you want. We'll do it together. We'll take a break, 10 minutes. I'll turn the printer back on. And when we come back, we'll actually do this and explore what we've got. We'll be back at 145.